All right. This will be literally my second video. I'm going to make a very small, very small soap. And um, I'm concentrating on people who are brand new to soaping who don't have all the supplies and maybe you've never made any soap before and you're thinking about doing it, you really can use anything for a mold. Um, this is a buttermilk container that I've lined with freezer paper and a lot of my molds I've made from foam board that I just used a X-Acto knife or a box cutter to cut and then I, I used hot glue but then I actually taped it with packing tape also to reinforce it because I did have a loaf that volcanoed and it literally like split my box open and went everywhere which was a disaster but anyways so now I reinforce with tape and I, I really check on my I check on my loaves all the time I have had a couple that cracked and things like that um so anyhow you can use something as simple as this and then the way that you figure out how to how how many ounces of oils I do everything by ounces how many ounces of oils you need is you measure your mold whatever it may be this one is seven and a half by two and three quarters two and three quarters so you multiply seven and a half or seven point five times 2.75 times 2.75 times 0.4 and you'll get mine is it was 22.78 whatever so I'm doing 23 ounces of oils which will fill this perfectly that's how you measure how many ounces of oils that you need and then what you do is you go into soap calc and you put in you know 23 ounces of oils and you put the oils that you want to use, the percentages that you want to use. Today I'm doing a very basic recipe because I wanted to, for people who don't know how to make their own recipe, have never made soap before, just figuring things out, that's why I'm doing this video. So I'm using, I was doing like a basic 30-30 30, which is 30% olive oil, 30% palm oil, and 30% coconut oil. I just like did a little tweak on that. So I'm doing 25% palm oil. I'm doing 30% coconut oil. I'm doing 25% rice bran oil. And then I've got 10% shea butter, 5% castor oil, and 5% sweet almond oil. And that ends up being... 5.7 ounces of palm oil, 6.9 ounces of coconut oil, 5.7 ounces rice bran oil, 2.3 ounces of shea butter, 1.2 ounces of sweet almond oil, and 1.2 ounces of castor oil. And then my lye, which you will find out if you put it into soap calc, it is 3.2 ounces of lye and then 8.7 ounces of water or I'm using well today I am using distilled water usually I use aloe vera but um, or coconut milk or whatever but I'm just using distilled water for simplicity today and um, I'm actually doing a water discount and so I am only using six like six and a half ounces of water basically I doubled my lye and that's how much water I'm using. I suggest for if you're just starting out that you use full water, you don't use a water discount because I didn't when I was first making my, when I first started making soap, I, I used full water. It stays fluid longer and it's just better. I, I think that people who are starting out, you should do I think you should do everything yourself. All the research yourself, find out everything yourself, figure everything out yourself because you learn more that way. But, you know, I, I do understand it can be frustrating not understanding what percentages mean and, you know, how to convert the percentages into ounces and all that good stuff. So that's why I'm, I'm just breaking it down. Um, 
so anyways we're, we're gonna start I have all my oils in here and then I also have um, some colloidal oatmeal and kale and clay and it's already in there and I am gonna buzz it up a little with my um, stick blender before I put the lye in As you can see, I already have my colors. Um, I've got some activated charcoal and oil here. I've got um, a cobalt blue, um, and then I have cobalt blue mixed with a tiny bit of char activated charcoal because I wanted it to be like a deep navy. And then I've got my water dispersed um, titanium dioxide, and I'm using um, suit and tie fragrance oil. So, and I did put, um, I've got, I've got silk in my lye water, so I'm going to put it through a strainer because typically, um, I do have a little bit of junk floating around in, in my lye water from the silk. It just doesn't completely dissolve for me. And be careful obviously I mean like this isn't the most ideal strainer because my hands are so close to it and I have burned myself a little bit one time um, when there was a hole in my glove so just be careful always make sure there's no holes in your gloves and um, don't use this kind of a strainer <laughs> get one on a with a handle or something this is stupid of me I need to get a different one Always wear your safety equipment, you know, wear long sleeves, wear gloves, wear protective eye gear. When you're mixing your lye, you can wear a face mask. I just keep my face like really far away from it. I have used face masks in the past. This stuff is serious. It's no joke. Uh, lye gets extremely hot when you put it into the water. I believe it, it can get like up to 200 degrees. Keep your children away from it. Keep, you know, your pets away from it. Just really be careful. And then I only bring bring things to emulsification. I don't. As you can see, I'm actually, um, it's kind of thickening up on me in a strange way that I've never had happen before. I've never had it thicken up in that strange way, but just keep stirring it and limit your use of the stick blender as much as you can to keep everything fluid. So look, that looks great. It's emulsified. Um, there's no oil floating to the top. There's no oil separating. That's exactly what you want without going too far. And um, the other thing to remember is don't panic because um, I there have been a couple times when something has happened that I wasn't expecting to happen and I kind of um, just like really got scared and freak out a little bit and just don't do that because even if it even if you do have something not work out it's not the end of the world um, you know. It is what it is. So, and I always have a wet rag around because I tend to make a huge mess. And I like to, look, this is getting really thick, um, which I, I'm kind of surprised because I used a recipe that doesn't typically get thick quickly. 
but I did use a water discount so like I was telling you guys before you know don't use the water discount do full water and then you'll know that you're not gonna have issues with things coming tracing too quickly for you you'll have lots of time to work on what you want to work on so basically I'm just you know I'm not freaking out I and mean, whatever happens even if it does thicken up really bad on me I can do a different type of design than I was planning to originally you know that's it's always there's always something that you can do even if it's just plop it in and it's not what you were thinking it was gonna be it, it just go with the flow that's what you got to do when you're soaping And this is a smaller recipe than I usually do too, so um, I'm going to kind of put a little bit in here and then I'll see if I need to add more. Yeah, see, I, I don't, this is, I'm glad I did not put more than that in each of those containers because it would have been, that would have been too much, so. I'm going to do white in this last container and um, to be honest I kind of think that my fragrance oil de decelerated my um, trace made it a little bit thinner when I put it in there so I'm just getting every last bit of my soap powder in here don't like to waste anything and then you know clean out those little specks all right and then I've got my white here my titanium dioxide and pour that in there just a little bit This one is the one that I wanted to be a little bit lighter. Oh, actually, maybe it's not, but it doesn't matter to me. This is actually the activated charcoal. It's okay though. I can always um, put water bubbles in my dam. Excuse me, excuse my language. I can always bring this over and just uh, clean it. first starting out I didn't really know how to do things and I tried to just um, I tried to just stir in my colors don't do that because it doesn't work <laughs> you'll get um, uneven coloring you have to stick blend it in and that's why I always um, stir in my fragrances because then you have um, more time available to you to um, Use your stick blender for your colors. Okay. This is very, like I said, this is a really small. It's a small batch of soap for me. I don't usually, so it's a little harder to mix it up just because it's so shallow. But like a, you know, it's fine. It's totally fine. 
this is all very nice and fluid. Look at it, it looks awesome. I can do a drops roll with this, no problem. In fact, it's, it's actually a little looser than I'd like it to be right now. I'm kind of trying to stir those air bubbles that I got in there out of there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a drop swirl, which is like, to me, super, super simple and really, really pretty.
able to wipe that off that book easily. This is not. And then I don't want to mess up whatever drops will I've done inside of it. So basically I'm just going to do this in the very top layer. Let's go ahead and cut this one it's um scented in suit and tie from be scented um this is the one where i used that buttermilk container worked out perfect um for something small you know i actually There we go. I just did a drop swirl. Um, white as the base color and then I used um, cobalt blue mixed with some a little bit of activated charcoal and then another one that was just the plain cobalt blue and then activated charcoal. I tried to do like a navy blue, cobalt blue, black and base color as white. I'm not sure if you can actually tell the difference in the two different blues. I maybe should have made it a little bit more defined as far as um, the difference in color. And actually, I kind of, I'm going to weigh this whole loaf to see exactly what it weighs, kind of to see how big I want to make the bars. The whole thing weighs two pounds. So, let's see, I kind of want to make them a little bit more than an inch. 
kind of want to make them thick, so I'm going to make a nice thick bar, a little over an inch. nice size bars out of this one. Let's just go ahead and go for it. Oh well, yeah, I can see the difference between the two different blues. A little bit lighter, a little bit darker. This was very, very fluid when I poured it. And you can tell because, you know, the drop swirl's kind of thin. I mean, it still looks good. I, I, I don't have any issues with the way that it looks, but sometimes it does look a little bit better if it's a little bit thicker, your batter. In my opinion, anyways, you know, it, uh, you got bigger swirls. Although for this small of a bar, I guess it's kind of fitting that it has kind of like a, a delicate, small kind of swirl to it. I don't know if I showed you the top. The top looked pretty. Uh, it had like a really nice swirl going on. Ooh, that one looks pretty, doesn't it? I like it. always love cutting and see what everything looks like. I'll give this bar to my son. That's a nice, nice, small, perfect square bar. He'll like it. And that is it. Um, I hope that you guys found that the video that I made helpful, informative, um, you know, give me questions if, if you guys like, comments, and uh, hopefully I'll be making another video soon. Subscribe, like, comment for me. Thanks. Bye.